Hi everyone and welcome to our first VGC 2020 on Sword and Shield episode of the season. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and it's been a long time coming and I'm pleased to be kicking off this series finally. So we're here, we're going to be using a very fun team to kick us off into this new series. So it's going to be based around Eskew, which is the little penguin Pokemon. We'll get into the team in a moment, but uh, we're going to jump on to the ranked battle. And I have had a few games with this team, but I've picked this one out as probably one of my favorite ones because it really encapsulates the ability to utilize the Trick Room here and then the ability on Eskew, which has got that Ice Face ability, making it kind of immune to physical hits initially when it is hit. The Ice Cube on its head kind of protects it from any physical attacks, taking no damage. Then the Ice Cube breaks on its head after that physical hit, and then its stats change. It gets a speed boost, which is extremely good and useful especially if you're going for a belly drum strategy so you can see our team here on the left which is indeedy female the sq the obama snow ride on uh jellicent and arcanine so the ride on's got a lightning rod as its ability because it does protect us against the electric type users it could really threaten jellicent we'll break down the team later in the video and i will be revealing the rental code as well so you can check that out now our opponent in this episode is magic key and we're going to get straight into this one. They're leading out with the Togekiss and Chandelure. So straight away, this stops me in my tracks. Because the one thing that SQ doesn't really want to be taking is special type attacks. Because its ability, Ice Face, doesn't protect you against the special side of attackers. So things like Heat Wave, which I'm kind of worried about here from the Chandelure, make me quite worried straight away. I don't really want to be taking too much damage. Especially if I want to utilize that Belly Drum later on. And especially the Togekiss as well, kind of known to be able to Dynamax could throw out a big special type attack which they're known for and that would really put us in a bad position so here i'm just going to go for an attack into the chandelier i want to make sure that i'm trying to get rid of it because it does threaten our sq and our abomasino in the back so i want to try and get as much damage on that early on as possible and i'm just going to keep sq around for later and switch in jellicent here it's suspecting that we are going to see a heat wave and maybe a dazzling gleam maybe an air slash from that togekiss so we do switch the sq out going to save that for later and by getting this board position out with the jellicent next to the indeedy it puts me in a nice position to go for a follow me trick room the next turn so we're in a nice place to get the trick room set up because we're pressuring this chandelier the psychic seed there on the indeedy really helping us take that heat wave a lot better and we do see a yawn come out from the togekiss now this puts Jellicent in a little bit of an awkward position because if we stay in Trick Room now, then we will fall asleep the next turn. But, I, you know, I figure with how fast my opponent's team is and us being able to utilize something like a Bomber Snow and Eskew in Trick Room before that Ice Face breaks, then it, it will be quite useful here. We pressure the Chandelier here pretty hard, so the, the chances are it does switch out. This is why I kind of changed my mind and went for Follow Me, just to protect Jellicent pr primarily from an, an Air Slash from the Toga Kiss, because I do think the Chandelier switches out and doesn't really go for that, that Shadow Ball, knowing that the Follow Me would be into the DD, Indeedy, and it's also pressured from a Psychic as well um the one thing that i do worry about here is the togekiss air slash onto the jellicent kind of denying our, our trick room which is why i've went for that follow me more than anything else so we do see the chandelier switch out the garrido is going to hit the field now it is going to get the intimidate off but onto both our special attackers we're not too worried about that really right now so we can see we are going to get that follow me up and just protect ourselves from the togekiss another thing here would be a yawn coming out into the indeedy uh which we do see that does kind of put me in a bit of a bad position because it's it's obvious that if I want to keep the Indeedy around for later in the battle that I have to switch it out now which gives my opponent the opportunity to really kind of predict there because the Jellicent now is sleep it is going to take a turn of sleep this next turn we can't wake up so we, it's kind of dead in the water but I do want to preserve Indeedy for later now I do have the Sash on a Bomber Star. I do think about bringing an Eskew here but the Sash kind of gives me that little bit of uh, security here I guess against against what my opponent can do at least they'll have to double attack into the Obama snow if they want to get rid of it and the likelihood is they might take this opportunity to attack into the Jellicent knowing that it is asleep just to get rid of it off the field because under Trick Room it does put on a lot of pressure on my opponent especially with the, the big water spouts, the sap strength and things like that that we're known for. So I'm going to switch in DD out, get rid of that yawn, just reset it and then we'll get our Abomasnot onto the field. And if we can successfully get Abomasnot on the field here it means we're going to be able to put a lot of pressure onto both of these 
these Pokemon on my opponent's side of the field with these big Blizzard type attacks. So we do get Bomber Snow and get that Snow Warning up and Jellicent does stay asleep and burning that one turn of sleep turn. And I think they predicted that Jellicent might switch out here going for the Power Whip, going for a Yawn into that slot but not not quite getting that off here. Uh, the Power Whip takes us down low enough for the Hail to chip us out. But this is perfect because Jellicent going down, it's kind of dead weight asleep. It could take three sleep turns. You never know. So getting rid of it off the field now so we can utilize our Trick Room turns is perfect. So what we're going to do is get the SQ in and we can start our little strategy. The Blizzards are going to be chunking the Togekiss. I'm not really worried about that too much. It is going to be able to take at least one Blizzard. So we have to worry about a Yawn into SQ, which is the one thing I do worry about right here i do think about going for an aurora veil right now but i think because we still got a sash intact we're not in the, the worst position so um do i attack with eskew or do i go for the belly drum i think because the gyarados is mainly a physical type attacker i'm not really too worried like the togekiss can attack us but it's not going to be KOing us and we can we're like a total immune to whatever gyarados does for one turn anyway with this ice face active so i'll go for the belly drum now and if we can get this set up remember the eskew is still pretty slow um, compared to the Gyarados and the Togekiss now under the Trick Room, so we should still be moving before it. It's just a case of if our Ice Face gets broken here, then our speed will jump and we'll be in a little bit of a tighter position. But things are alright. we got the, the Obama Snow next to us, firing off Blizzards, it's fine. We do see the Gyarados, it does Dynamax here, so going to chunk itself up and beef itself out and um, it's going to be a bit more difficult to take down but like I say we should be all right as long as we don't see the yawn and we don't we just see the follow me from the Togekiss maybe he just wants to protect the Gyarados a little bit more this next turn as we do get a blizzard off and do some nice damage to that Togekiss meaning that we we will be able to take it down the next turn but we get a freeze on it which is huge for us and big help there and we do get the belly drum off with our little penguin and he is going to boost that attack stat to the max. And we also have the Citrus Berry on there. So it does mean we're in a nice position now. Knowing that the Gyarados can't do anything to us this turn. Because of its physical type attacks and our Ice Face ability. That we are going to be able to Dynamax the next turn and really start doing some work. Uh, we do see an S max airstream into the Bomber Snow. Does just take us down to our Sash, so that's fine. And really kind of not doing my opponent any favors with that speed boost there, especially because we've got a couple of turns of t Trick Room left. Now we do see the, the chip on both my opponent's Pokemon here from the hill, and uh, we're free just to fire off another Blizzard here because what we can do is Blizzard, take the Togekiss down, and then attack into the Gyarados with our Eskew, go for an Icicle Crash into it, and uh, that should be enough to take both Pokemon down here. We're not worried about the freeze here, and I don't think it really plays too much effect into what my opponent can do unless the togekiss does have protect by any chance um it's unlikely though togekiss doesn't really normally carry protect here so it's likely more going to go for uh, another follow me which then kind of makes the the freeze even more l like null and void in my opinion anyway um the only thing that would make a difference is the protect there which we don't know if it's got or not so uh we do see a max guard from the garado going to try and stick around at least one more turn now as we do see the Togekiss. I don't know what it was going for there. Maybe a Protect, you never know. Um, but we do get the Blizzard off with our Bomber Snow. It'll be enough to take the Togekiss down. And uh, we're still sitting in Trick Room, still sitting in a nice position here. It'll be interesting to see what my opponent brings in next as we do go for that Icicle Crash, but into the Max Guard. Gyarados going to stick around for at least one more turn. Um, my opponent here probably trying to stall out the Trick Room turns, I would think. Um, Chandelure could come in for my opponent. That's what I would kind of expect, but we haven't seen that fourth Pokemon yet, so we don't know what their last Pokemon is, and that could cause us a few problems. Like Chandelure here, I'm not too worried about because SQ should still underspeed it in the Trick Room, depending on the build of it, of course. And we do have Liquidation, which is nice coverage. It'll be able to knock it out and chandelier is pretty low anyway so i'm assuming a blizzard and then maybe the ch the hail chip could be enough to take it down a bomber snow is pretty powerful it can throw out some big damage but we do see my opponent he is going to bring in the dragapult here so um not really a, a favorable position for my opponent at all now i could go for the blizzard here and i do think about it but you know what a Bomber Snow is really on its last legs. The Trick Room is going to end soon. And the Aurora Veil is probably the most useful thing for us to take. Now, in front of two potentially physical type attackers in Dragapult and Gyarados, 
SQ sitting in such a good position right now. So we are going to actually Dynamax our SQ and go for that Max Hailstorm or Max Hail Crash or however, whatever it is called. Not too familiar with it, honestly, if you hadn't noticed already. Anyway, we do Max our SQ. Looks so cool. It's such a cool design. It's such so wacky. I do love it. Anyway, we are going to get this Blizz, uh, this Aurora Veil up, which does help bolster our defenses, especially when we are Dynamaxed as well. It's like the thing that we want up for SQ just to make it take those attacks a bit more when we do get the Max Hailstorm. Was I right the first time? I don't know. Anyway, into the Gyarados. Max attack easily enough to take it down. So Gyarados gone. They lose their Dynamax Pokemon. And I think this might be the last turn of Trick Room. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, we do take the Dragon Claw. It does break our Ice Face. And boof. Oh. <laughs> but this is the last turn of Trick Room. So this means we do get a speed boost. Now Dragapult's still going to outspeed us, unfortunately. That's uh, one of the drawbacks. Um, that we don't get the jump on Dragapult, but that's fine. Like, we're not in the worst position at all. We got our Aurora Veil support up. There's no way that Dragapult is going to take us down. Now, we could make the play of switching a bomber's not out to bring it back in to get an Ice Face up again, but I don't really see there's any need to, to do that and risk that. Now, we're going to go for the Max Geyser into the Chandelure just to make sure that we take it down here. We are definitely going to outspeed the Chandelure. We know from earlier in the game that our Ndidi outsped it turn one, so we know that our SQ is going to outspeed it here. We're running max jolly nature so our speed is pretty safe here uh, the dragapult's definitely not taking sq down i wouldn't have thought behind an aurora veil um, and if a bomber snow can get an attack off here you know a blizzard probably will take down the dragapult so that's a big thing for us um, we do get the max geyser off we actually do outspeed the dragapult which is quite surprising um, but we do get the the chandelier anyway so no protect coming out there and we do set up the rain and that is that. So, Chandelure going down, Dragapult left. What are we gonna see the Dragapult go for? And it goes for another Dragon Claw, and we take that pretty comfortably there. So it is life orbed as well. And we do actually get the Blizzard off with a Bomber Snow, and it does stick around long enough to pick up the knockout onto Dragapult. And that is the game for us. So both our Ice types, which are generally quite weak Pokemon defensively, put in some big work here and I think this really shows off the team and its ability to to kind of sweep through and maneuver around really tight situations and it's done an incredible job. Okay so now we're going to take a look at the actual team breakdown we'll look at the EV spreads and some of the move sets before we give you that rental code so you can try this team out for yourselves. So we've got SQ here and um, not one for anything flashy I think I just mainly wanted to to max out its longevity that's why I've got 252 in HP. You know we're going to be boosting most of the time and maxing out its attack so we're not too worried about that attack investment uh, the speed's quite important there I did want to make sure that when its ice face does break um, after we take a physical hit that uh, that 130 base speed that it goes to from its 50 base speed is maxed out so we get the jump on pretty much everything else in the format they're hitting a speed stat of 200 with the jolly nature max EVs there like I say we could have maxed out uh, attack but with the support of Aurora Veil and the max HP you can see from that the match that we kind of had here that it does take a bunch more damage with that Aurora Veil support and um, then we'll move on to Ndidi so we've got the Psychic Seed here initially I wanted the Focus Sash here just to give it a little bit make it a bit more tricky for my opponent to take down especially if they're not doubling into it turn one just to support the SQ because of the follow me there it's so good the reason I haven't went for Togekiss here is because we're kind of doubling up on weaknesses like we don't really want to be so weak to steel type attacks and it's attackers because you know you've already got a bomber snow that doesn't like them right here is not super keen um and indeed he kind of doesn't have that weakness so for that reason it helps out a lot more and also the the psychic terrain is really nice to protect sq from things like pranks the t waves and just fake out in general and priority attacks that could be a little bit problematic so that's the main reason indeed he feels like really good support here we went for follow me which is kind of obvious to help us get the belly drum up in situations safeguard is another one to stop opponents burning us ally switch is another one just to infuriate your opponents if you're in a really tight spot it can help especially if you want to set the trick room up set the belly drum up or just get an attack off with one of the more powerhouse pokemon and then psychic which does actually hit pretty hard under the the trick room we went just for max attack because when i'm using the psychic i want to be able to hit as hard as possible and max speed because i don't really need as slow indeed here i feel like getting the psychic off 
first getting the safeguard off first is really important here and with the psychic seed kind of boost to the defenses it really helps out and it means we don't need so much investment to survive a lot of threatening attacks now we'll move on to the jellicent uh, you can see we've got a split of 252 hp 140 special attack modest nature and 116 special defense just maxing out that special well not maxing out maxing out the hp giving a bit of special defense support to give it a bit of a better chance against opposing rotoms with thunderbolts and um grass type attacks that are coming out we've got just a colba berry to protect against dark type attacks because we've got the indeedy support there for the ghost type threat water spout a shadow ball trick room and sap strength as its move set and i should change this because it is actually cursed body which is probably the better ability here um, and then we've got a, a magic man we've got a, a bomber snow we've definitely put the focus sash in this it's got a four times weakness to fire which is pretty common in the vgc format protect aurora veil leaf storm is its new move that it gets in generation eight and then blizzard so it's got that nice coverage of grass and ice uh, grass types are really good in vgc so this is really nice to have especially if we can get the trick room up against even things like uh Ry rhydon rhyperia other opposing ground types and uh, there's so many dragons in the format that blizzard spams look really strong uh the weather control as well is nice to disrupt opposing weathers and uh, aurora veil support is just incredible if you can get it off and then we'll move on to arcanine which is just a kind of standard special Arcanine. I feel like we've got a few physical attackers in the team. So having more special attackers is probably better. We're not then crippled by Intimidate. So this is the reason here. Went with a Lumberry because we've got Safeguard on this Arcanine. It makes it a little bit easier if there's fast sleep, fast T-Wave, fast whatever that can be disruptive to Arcanine. It means that we can heal a status condition and then get that safeguard off protected the next turn will-o-wisp nice support for opposing physical type attackers then snarl to lower special attackers and then heat wave just generally which is really nice against durant teams because we've got the follow me from ndidi and then we can heat wave not worry about redirection from the opposing uh durant team and we can just wipe it out in one heat wave even if it is dynamaxed so speed there we've nearly maxed it out but given it enough to outspeed the majority of things you want to be outspeeding so you can function a bit better and it's not really a pokemon that you want to be running in trick room anyway and then we'll move on to our last pokemon which is going to be ride on you could easy put rhyperia here but i really like the the lightning rod and i think if you're going lightning rod with rye ride on or rhyperia i think it's it's the better option is ride on with the the bulk that you get with the eviolite and then protect brick and swipe was a nice option i thought here we could have went fire punch but i think we've got the coverage we need elsewhere in the team and being able to lure opposing um pokemon's uh attack stat is quite important in this this format because there's a lot of physical attackers so that can come in quite clutch sometimes and then just rock slide and high horsepower for the coverage you've got uh, a split of two two 28 HP and 220 defense, which gives you a good chance to survive a life orb, Charizard, Timid, um, Solar Beam. Not in the sun though, but you, you can disrupt the sun pretty well with a Bomber Snow. Um, and you're always king with the, the Rock Slide. So uh, that's pretty much the spread there. Just wanted to give it um, enough bulk to survive those big hits and be able to actually have a bit of offensive pressure itself. Um, and it makes for still a nice Dynamax Pokemon. When you've got the Trick Room up, if you want it as an option there, you know, you've got the, the Dragon type G, a D max move which is nice to allow the opposing's attack stat you've got the the special defense boost with the the ground type and you can change the weather again if you want into sandstorm with that rock slide so um that is the team and we'll jump over now and here is the rental code so there you go my friends i hope you enjoyed the battle it was a very fun battle it really uh, kind of encapsulates the team i know there's a few members there that we didn't see um but have a lot of fun with this rental code and we'll be back very soon with another battle i will be streaming with this t this team so do make sure you come over to our twitch channel the link's down in the description uh, stream tuesdays thursdays and uh, we'll be having a bit of fun with this penguin and see how far we can get on the ladder with it but thanks for tuning in do leave a comments down below leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed it make sure you subscribe to the channel because we will have a bunch of vgc content coming out in the coming weeks and uh, just take care of yourselves and i'll see you all for the next one